Shown here is a belt tensioner tool. It's really difficult to remove and change the belt without this specialized tool. It's not recommended to try it alone. Also shown here is the locking tool for the tensioner. A simple nail or drill bit will also suffice, but the tool has a handy pull end on it. Also shown here is a new drive belt. You're going to remove the fuel tank vent valve. It's pictured here. Simply squeeze the connectors on both the top and the bottom of the valve and pull the connectors off. Squeeze the tabs on the connector and pull down to remove the lower connector to the fuel tank vent valve. Squeeze the tabs and pull up to remove the upper connector on the fuel tank vent valve. Pull the tab on the side of the electrical connector and pull down to remove it. Now simply push the tab on the bracket inward and slide the valve off. In this picture you can see the pins, green arrows, on the belt tensioner tool. The fulcrum point, yellow arrow, fits over the upper tensioner bolt. The pins fit into two holes in the tensioner arm itself. You'll need to remove the wheel well liner to access the belt and pulleys. The liner is held in place by three Phillips head screws, purple arrows, and plastic rivets, green arrows. You may need to hold out the portion of the plastic rivet while you unscrew the center Phillips screw part. Place the tensioner tool pins into the holes on the tensioner and use the upper tensioner locking bolt as a pivot point. Shown here is the tensioner in the lock position. Rotate the tensioner tool until the second hole protrudes from the tensioner arm, yellow arrow. Once it shows, place the locking pin through the hole, green arrow. Once tension on the belt has been relieved, you can pull the belt off the various pulleys. If the belt is cracked or damaged, you can simply cut it once tension is relieved. The procedure for changing the serpentine belt on non-supercharged Cooper models is virtually the same, except that the tensioner is different. In this picture, you can see the special tool used for the Cooper to retract the tensioner as well as the lock pin. To retract the belt tensioner on the Cooper, place the forks of the belt tool over the ear of the tensioner and press the tensioner back until you can insert the locking pin into the hole on the side of the tensioner, green arrow. Once in place, you can let the tension off the belt tool and the tensioner is locked. You can now remove the belt. This picture is of a belt tensioner removed from the car and shows more clearly how the tool locks into place behind the ears cast into the belt tensioner arm, green arrows. If you don't have a belt tool, you can also insert a 3 8 drive ratchet into the square hole, purple arrow. Keep in mind that you will need quite a bit of leverage to move the arm, such as a breaker bar. Once the arm has been retracted enough, Install the locking pin into the hole on the tensioner, yellow arrow. This image shows the components driven by the serpentine belt on a typical Mini Cooper four-cylinder engine. Green arrow, alternator. Yellow arrow, water pump. Purple arrow, AC compressor. Red arrow, the main crankshaft pulley. The blue arrow is the tensioner for the serpentine belt. This image shows the components driven by the serpentine belt on a typical Mini Cooper S four-cylinder engine. Orange arrow, supercharger, yellow arrow, idler pulley, green arrow, alternator, purple arrow, AC compressor, red arrow, main crankshaft pulley, and the blue arrow, the tensioner for the serpentine belt. To remove the belt on the R55, 56, and 57 Mini, you're going to start by removing the front headlight. Loosen and remove the four 10 millimeter bolts holding it in place, green arrows. Once free, squeeze the connector on the back of the headlight to unplug it from the car. In order to access the tensioner, we will need to remove the upper support panel which Mini refers to as a lock carrier. Remove the two 13 millimeter bolts at the end of the panel, green arrows. Then remove the 10 millimeter bolt next to the headlight, red arrows. Next, remove the two torque bolts holding the right hood catch to the panel, yellow arrows. Now remove the two plastic pins securing the front grille to the panel, purple arrow. The right side of the lock carrier is similar. Remove the two 13 millimeter bolts at the end of the panel, green arrows. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt next to the headlight, red arrow. 
Remove the two torque bolts holding the left hood catch to the panel, yellow arrows. Now remove the two plastic pins securing the front grille to the panel, purple arrow. Also remove the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the right headlight in place and squeeze the black plastic connector on the back to disconnect it from the car. Remove the plastic pin securing the washer fluid reservoir to the lock carrier. The last step to remove the lock bridge is to disconnect the hood release cable. Pry open the end of the black plastic connector. Inside you'll see the cable assembly. Pull the end of the cable out of the housing and remove the metal ball from the connector. Once free, pry the plastic connector piece up and out of the lock bridge. Carefully feed it through the hole while you remove the lock carrier. Jack up the front of the car and secure it on jack stands. Remove the right front tire and begin to remove the wheel housing liner. This is held in place by plastic Phillips head screws, green arrows, another Phillips fastener, blue arrow, one 10 millimeter plastic nut, two torque screws, purple arrows. Once all the fasteners have been removed, carefully remove the liner. From inside the engine compartment, use a 30 millimeter wrench to turn the belt tensioner assembly clockwise. Once fully turned, press the small pin, green arrow, in. This will lock the belt tensioner and slacken the belt. From inside the wheel well, locate the small plastic pull tab located on the water pump friction wheel green arrow. Note, it will be difficult to see this as it's tucked up inside. Pull the tab out as far as it will go. This will release the tension on the belt which rides in between the friction wheel and the crankshaft pulley. Now snake the old belt out from inside the engine. Take the new belt and fit it over all of the pulleys. Re-secure the pull tab inside the friction wheel and rotate the belt tensioner clockwise again. As you do, it will release the locking pin. Now just reinstall the wheel, liners, lock bridge, and headlights. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.